Well, welcome everybody. We are going to be doing a quick training today on snowblower shear pins. So this is a this is a problem that we have with some of our snow removal equipment that we need to address and this will hopefully help you in being able to do that more quickly and more efficiently. So we are going to get started here. Let's see if I can do this. Hey, how about that? So your snowblower is not blowing. You're using your snowblower, you're out there removing snow, and all of a sudden it's just not blowing. That could be a bunch of things. Um, there could be something clogged in there, and you already should know. Turn everything off before you stick your hands down inside of anywhere. Just don't do that. That's why it's a good idea to carry some kind of a stick or something if you need to, to um, you know, clear a clog. But anyway, a lot of the snow blowers will have like a little shovel on the front of it, plastic shovel, that you can actually chip down in there and, and clear a clog. But we're not talking about clogs today. We're specifically looking at a problem that's very easy for you to take care of. So your blower's not blowing, or you look in the front and you can see that um, the tines, they're called, Okay, the tines, you can see that, that one half is moving and the other half is not, or maybe they're both not moving. So what do you need to do? You need to check the shear pins. And in this picture here, you'll see where the shear pins are. The arrows point to the shear pins. And pretty much every two-stage snowblower, at least the ones we use, have shear pins. Let's look at the location of these. So this is just a typical diagram of a two-stage snowblower. A marks the spot of where you'll find the regular shear pins, the ones that most commonly break. And B is a lot of the uh, models will have another shear pin back up inside on that particular um, axle right there. Um, hang on one second. Okay, um, so there's the location. So to remove these, quite often what will happen is the pin is in there and, well, you've hit a rock or a, like a jump rope or even a hard chunk of ice. Many different things can cause this problem. And what happens is the torque of the uh, wheel, I'm trying to turn that wheel, will cause this pin to shear right off. And so quite often what you'll have is half of a pin in there. You'll look and you'll see the head of the pin or the bottom of the pin, but you won't see the other half. And you can spin that, that wheel freely, usually, um, which is not supposed to happen. You're supposed to, when it's off, grab onto that wheel and it's not supposed to turn because of the, the gearbox and the transmission. So to remove that pin, it's pretty easy. You either take a replacement pin, you could take a screwdriver, a stick, whatever you've got that is sturdy enough, put it down in that hole and either hit it or hit it with a hammer and the pin, the other half of the broken pin, should pop right out without too much trouble. It's really simple to do. So there's a couple of different kinds of shear pins and you'll see on this this pin here there's these grooves in it and what those grooves are they are machined in there specifically and the way that the temper, the the strength of this particular metal is, will allow for the torque of the uh, the blower to work just fine until it hits something. And once it hits something, um, it's it's not really strong, if that's the the right term to put it, and it'll cause this to break. That's so that you don't break other components like the transmission, because that's real expensive to replace. So this is a cotter pin type, and what that means is it's just a, a pin that you put in, and you'll see the hole kind of down here at the bottom, and that takes um, what's called a cotter, we used to call it a cotter pin. I don't know exactly the term, but the most common term, term is a cotter pin or hair pin or whatever. Uh, but it takes a uh, pin that goes in there that keeps it from, from pulling back out.
The other type that we use, and you might see, it's called a, um, a bolt type. And this actually looks like a bolt, but you can see those machined grooves in the uh, in the in, in in this pin. Again, that's so that it will not um, or that it will break at a certain uh, torque level. Okay, so this is more like just a regular type of bolt, except it's not a regular bolt. If you make the mistake of putting a regular bolt in thinking, ah, I'll be fine, guess what? I did that. And my home snowblower, I completely blew the transmission out because the next hard thing I hit, the torque destroyed the transmission. So I've got a several hundred dollar piece to replace where these are just a couple of bucks. I should have just waited and got a shear pin. I know what I get for being lazy. So on the, the pin installation, these cotter pin type, it's very simple. You just line up the tines with the axle and you look and you see the hole. You can see daylight. Ah, oh, hey, I got it lined up. You put the pin in, goes in real simple. And then you take the cotter pin or the keeper or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you put it through that hole. And as you can see in this picture, they're doing it with a pair of needle nose pliers and they just push it down through on the right hand side. You can see the, um, the pin that's already been put in there. So it's very simple to do. Here is the bolt type. Now the bolt type, you just put that down in and you tighten the bolt. You could use a crescent wrench. You could use a socket, which is the best. Um, you could use an end wrench, whatever it takes to go ahead and, and tighten that down. You don't have to crank on it so you break it, but you just crank it down so that, so that it's tight. Okay. So that it doesn't come back out. And these kind of bolts, uh, the nut tends not to come back out. Okay, they're, once you put them down in, uh, they're nice and secure. They're not just going to vibrate out. Well, if my explanation hasn't been sufficient and you really want to see somebody do this, which I don't blame you, I would too, uh, here's the YouTube site that you can go to. I have put this link in, if you go to the facility services, uh, custodial services, sorry, uh, YouTube training page. And if you look at, um, at the playlists, and if you go to training videos on the playlist, you will see that there is, this is linked. This video is linked to, um, to that. So you can actually see somebody besides me hands-on go through the whole process of how this happens. And if you don't want to go through all that, just look at cut and paste this website here and check out this video. It's about three minutes long, so it's really quick, really simple, and it helps you to understand how to replace these shear pins. So here's why we bring this up. You're out there blowing you might be halfway through your property. You might be just getting started, but come on, we all know this is going to happen at the end of your property. So you have to walk like a half mile back just to call and report that you've got a problem with your machine. That's how it always is, right? Okay. The nice thing about knowing how to replace a shear pin now is you will know what to look for. And if you think this is the shear pin, that's the problem. You can see that the shear pins broken. And if you have a replacement shear pin, that's kind of the important thing is our equipment manager might drop some off to you during the year and you can put them in your desk drawer so you've got them or they might just drop some off to you uh, during the winter season. However, this works, but they're very, very easy to install. OK, so if you have this as an issue, now you know how to do it and you can go to this, uh, go to this video and it will show you how to do it. So really there's, it's a whole lot easier to just be able to put this in and seriously, you can do it in two minutes and you can be up and running again and taking care of the things you need to be taking care of as far as your snow removal. So, hey, thanks for watching and uh, check out some of the other cool stuff that we have on the channel. Thank you.